Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. My name is Winona, a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, grateful for just the victories that he has brought to me in my life and the blessings that he has brought myself and my family. Very grateful for this. Um, today we are in the book of Lamentations, and this is Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Um, and he is just at wit's end. He is just at wit's end. So before we get started, um, let's take it to God. Let's take it to God because we don't have to feel like we're at wit's end because we have a God that loves us. Amen. So dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with just those grateful hearts that that through your word, through the experiences that, that your prophet Jeremiah went through and, and his words, we can find comfort and hope in them. So we're grateful for this, Father God. We pray for just that hope to fill everyone's hearts. So I pray that today's lesson, today's devotional touches someone's heart to know that they need to remember to turn to you. Turn to you. Talk to their dad. That's what you want us to do and that's what we want to do too, Father. So thank you again, your son's name, amen. So yes, so today we're in Lamentations. It's Lamentations 3. I'm gonna be reading 17 through 26, but you know, I need to encourage you to just read that chapter. This is kind of a, a, a chapter that's filled with hope in God's faithfulness. Um, let me see, in one Bible it says, you know, a little caption for this chapter, hope in the midst of affliction. And the other one is hope in the Lord's faithfulness. God is faithful and he does give us hope. Amen. So let me read the, um, the scriptures. It's like I said, it is 17 through 26. But again, I do encourage you read the whole chapter because we've all lived this exactly, you know. So here it goes. Peace has been stripped away, and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Amen. One more. Let me read one more. And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. I could keep reading. I really could. You know, we, he talks about the yoke of his discipline. You know, put on his yoke. I know in another version it says, where is that? Anyway, it talks about the yoke. And, and, and in scripture it does talk about, you know, Jesus is saying, Put on my yoke and I will ease your burdens. When we put on a yoke, that means that we're that we're we're walking a path together. It's you know, you put on that yoke like like in farming they, they put on on uh, their oxen or their their cows, whatever. They put a yoke. It's a it's a it's a a solid piece of wood or what have you that goes across the the shoulders and neck of one cow or ox to another so they walk simultaneously together and it eases their their burden you know if they're pulling a cart or what have you between the two of them they can take on more because they're walking together they have help from each other and that's what the Lord wants us to do he wants us to to ask him for help so I want to read, like I said, this whole chapter is, is a great chapter filled with hope. So I'm just going to read in my study Bible in the um, Life Recovery. It's, it's a recovery Bible, and, so, and it's a study Bible. And it does, it has little, little, little paragraphs about these verses and pertaining to our recovery and how, they, and how you can kind of interpret them. So it says, the prophet's words become personal in this chapter. He is heartbroken and weary, discouraged and completely undone. He felt alone and helpless and very much afflicted by God. Have you felt like that? Are things happening right now that you feel hopeless? 
and completely afflicted by God, that you, that you feel just a complete disconnection. Jeremiah spoke, fr spoke frankly with God. He didn't hide his despair or his anger. And expressing his, feelings is, expressing his feelings was an important step towards recovering his hope. Sometimes we hide our feelings from God, fearing that he will condemn us for them. God is never offended by our honest anger. Okay, Unless we speak it, we cannot deal with it and escape its destructive guilt. Or its grip, I'm sorry. We need, to, we need to verbalize these things. If we are angry, we need to learn to get it out. But talk to God. You know, he can take it. If you are angry and you feel that maybe it's his fault, let him know. Let him know. Talk it out with God. That's what, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. And so after Jeremiah poured out his pain to God, he reflected upon God's faithfulness. What could possibly deliver him from his terrible anguish? Nothing except the mercy of a gracious and loving God. God's love is unfailing. His purpose is clear. His righteousness unquestionable. When we come to God with our pain, we are sure to get a fair hearing. God in his mercy and grace will help us overcome our setbacks and gain a new perspective on life when we ask him. You know, um... He knew, Jeremiah knew from his personal experience about God's faithfulness, you know. And in here, I mean, in Jeremiah, as a prophet, God spoke to him and told him exactly what's going to happen to his people if they don't turn their ways, you know. So God had promised that punishment would follow disobedience, and it did. But God also promised a future filled with hope, future restoration and blessing, and Jeremiah knew that he would keep that promise also. Remember what I've always said, that this our scripture is filled with God's promises. You know, if we are disobedient, there are, you know, through these prophets, God has let them know this is what's going to happen if these people don't straighten up and fly right. This is what's going to happen. And it did happen. But there's also that promise if they turn back to me, I will fill them up again. And those promises are fulfilled also. So that's God's faithfulness. We can, we can be assured that when we do return to him, you know, we all have those setbacks and what have you, but when we return and ask God, please, he's there for us. Amen. So God disciplines us because he loves us. Okay, when we're following a dangerous path, we need to be turned back to the right course. Sometimes the only way God can get our attention is by knocking us down. Okay, so though we may be getting angry at God for his discipline, it's an opportunity for us for change. We should take a moral inventory to discover the root of our problems, and then we can turn our problems and sins over to God and seek to live according to his program. When we face the pain of discipline, we would be wise to ask Jeremiah's question. Why, then why should we mere humans complain when, we're com when we are punished for our sins? Jeremiah had it right. If we are going to continue, ah, excuse me, if we are going to continue down that dangerous path that we're on, why should we complain when we're punished for these sins? We brought it on ourselves. The majority of us in recovery have brought these things on ourselves. It's basically, you know, as kids, getting in trouble. We knew. I know myself, I got in trouble a lot. I knew I was doing wrong, but yet I got angry when my dad disciplined me. Now, his manner of discipline, that could be questioned, but I didn't have a right to get angry at being disciplined because I did wrong. I knew I did wrong but I got caught. That's what I was angry about. So let's take a look at what the Life Recovery Devotional has to say about our verses today. Remember, we're step three. Gosh, I'm sorry. My allergies are kicking up. Step three, and it's day 23, and it's called God's Faithfulness. And again, our reading was in Lamentations 3, 17 to 26. Perhaps we're heartbroken because of the bitter suffering in our family. Maybe our once good reputations have been ruined and now we're ashamed. 
Our lives have been captive. Our lives have been taken captive and destroyed before the watchful eyes of friends and foe alike. Jeremiah watched this happen to his beloved nation Israel. It's no wonder he's known as the weeping prophet. The people of God refused to listen to Jeremiah's warnings and were taken captive by a heathen nation as a result. Consequences. Lamentations is a record of Jeremiah's lament over the shameful fate of God's people. He weeps. Peace has been stripped away and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in the Lord. I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Lamentations 3, 17 to 26. Turning our lives over to God includes giving him our pain and our suffering. God is strong and loving enough to lift our burdens and mend our broken hearts. So when all hope is gone, we can entrust ourselves to God, remembering his never-ending compassion. We're his children. He loves us. As a loving father, he needs to discipline us when we do wrong. Amen? But it doesn't mean he stops loving us. That means he loves us all the more. He wants us to do good. He wants us to be good. Amen. So that's why we get blessings. That's why he watches over us and our families, because we're following him. And with that comes those blessings. Amen. So, hey, you guys, have a great day today. Read that scripture. I, I, I encourage you, read chapter three in Lamentations. Read about Jeremiah. He just, you know, he, he was at wit's end over watching his nation, his people, watching Israel just implode in themselves. He knew what was coming. He knew what was coming for them. God had promised these consequences, but he also knew that God made a promise to bring them back. Amen? God makes promises to us too, and we need to remember those promises. You guys have a great day today. God bless, and we'll talk tomorrow.